Welcome back everybody. Today we're doing another Surefire Light review. This one's one of their budget models here. Um, so I get a ton of questions about it because folks are always looking for uh, good affordable lights that work in a lot of different uh, applications. So this one comes up as a topic of discussion a lot. So what we're going to do first is do a beam comparison. I like to let you guys see what you can expect in terms of output from these lights and then get into some of the details. So we'll compare it to a few different models here. We have the Elzetta Bravo, one of my all-time flashlights for sure. However, it's much more expensive than this one. And uh, one that's also a little bit more expensive is the 6px tactical from surefire as well so we'll step outside next and uh, take a look and see how it does in the low light performance test for those that are new to my low light videos this shed here is about 25 meters away corner of that fence right there is about 45 meters away so it's pretty good distance what you're looking at now is the g2x uh, so you can see it's got a little bit of a defined edge there but it's certainly plenty bright for just about any sort of searching application that you could see out here in the backyard. You can imagine inside the house, it's going to do a real good job as well. And then uh, to compare and contrast, there is the uh, 6PX Tactical. A little bit brighter hotspot, I think. Not much different, though. And uh, you can see it's pretty similar all around. So there's the two compared. There's a little bit more of a white hue here on the 6PX than there is here on the G2X over here on the right. But all in all, pretty similar. Here we have the output from the Elzetta Bravo. You can see it's a much more balanced beam overall, and that has to do with the way the reflector is. It's a solid acrylic uh, design rather than an actual reflector like most lights are to include the 6PX or in the uh, G2X. So you can see there's real no, no real edge, I should say. But uh, the hot spot, maybe not quite as hot, but it is a little bit wider. So just to contrast that, here's the uh, G2X. You can see what that looks like. Definitely a different beam pattern, but again, the Elzetta is going to be a much more expensive light as well. So, just kind of depends what you're looking for there. Elzetta is a fantastic light, like we mentioned earlier. So, again, here's the uh, G2X and the Elzetta side to side on the ground. You can kind of see the difference in the beam pattern there, at least in the hot spot. And then again, here's the uh, G2X and then the Elzetta, if my camera can focus. And it does. So, those are the differences there. So you've seen the output, let's get into some of the details of it. First off, this is obviously a tan model. They come in black and I believe there's sort of a foliage green model out there as well. There may be others that are made, but those are the ones I'm aware of. Uh, it does have a one inch body and a 1.25 inch bezel. So it's going to fit a lot of uh, common light bounce out there. On the uh, SLR 106 CR that you guys have seen throughout the video, we're using this uh, BCM key mod mount with a Manticore 4 end. Works just fine there, and you can see this one's made for one inch lights of all varieties. Slides right in there, you tighten it up, and you're in business. So it's going to fit on pretty much any one inch light mount, which is a huge uh, advantage of it. One thing to note though, Surefire does not consider this a weapon light. Um, that said, myself and many others in out there have used it on plenty of different rifles and uh, haven't had an issue. This one's been on 5.56, 5.45, and uh, 760 by 39 weapons. So far, zero issues, no negative light discharges, anything like that from recoil. So I know plenty of folks out there report that they've used them on 308 rifles as well with similar results. So it does seem to work just fine on most weapons in that application. Getting into operation of the light, the tactical model here is pretty simple. They do also make a pro model, which has a little bit of a different user interface. But on this one, uh, if you want constant on, you're going to rotate the tail cap all the way down, like so. And if you want just momentary on, which is how this one works, you just back it off a little bit like we just did. And then your tail cap is what activates the light. Now to completely de deactivate it, rotate it out a little bit further, and it'll lock it out, allowing it not to be uh, discharged if you're packing it up in a bag or something like that. So that's how that works. It should note. I should note that it comes with uh, two CR123 batteries, uh, which is always nice. At least it comes with two to start you out with. Those batteries are going to give you a 2.5 hour runtime, uh, generating 320 lumens of output there. The light itself is 5.2 inches long. They claim it's 4.4 ounces with the batteries. However, we've not found that. It comes in at 4.8 ounces on my scale uh, with those batteries. So just something to note there. Uh, up front, we have a uh, polycarbonate lens. 
the bezel itself is aluminum in a polymer housing here. Uh, they call it nitroline, nitroline, I should say, which is sort of a polymer rubberized housing. One complaint I'm going to have on this one, and honestly, it's going to be my only complaint throughout the video, um, is going to be the sort of grippiness, if you will, of this. If you're using it in a weapon uh, configuration, weapon mounted configuration, you'll never notice it and it's totally not an issue. But if you're carrying it as a standalone handheld light, um, it's not as grippy and probably could use a little bit of a knurling or a stippling, whatever you want to call it. It sort of is slippery when your hands are wet or sweaty. Again, that's going to be my only downside that you're going to see to this light so far. Um, but performance has been really good, as you guys have seen. I should note also, while we're having it apart there, that it is O-ring sealed all the way around, O-ring and gasket sealed. So uh, pretty good there. You're going to see it's done well in harsh environments and rain, snow, stuff like that. It's not had a problem with the elements there. So happy to report that as well. I think we covered enough of the details on the light that you get a pretty good idea on that. The most important detail though for a lot of folks is going to be price. Now this sucker, if you look around again, depending on where you look, is generally going to be under $60. So we'll put a link in the video description for you guys to check that out or looking to pick one of these up. But for that kind of money with Surefire's customer service technology and the kind of output that you saw there with those 320 lumens, I think this is an excellent buy for what you get. Obviously there's a lot more higher price. Uh, lights out there on the market. I've reviewed tons of them here before. Some of them are really nice. Uh, whether or not the performance upgrade, if you will, is worth it to you uh, is definitely something you're going to have to decide. That said, I'd be very comfortable using this light in a defensive situation on most rifles that I own. So uh, it's definitely a quality option if you are a budget-minded person uh, looking for something to uh, use in a defensive scenario, whether it be handheld, weapon-mounted, uh, whatever the case may be. If you guys have any questions that we didn't answer here in the video, by all means, you can post below in the comments section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always. But thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. I truly appreciate it. And we hope to see you in the next video.